Today we're going to be taking apart the uh, High Point C9, basically uh, disassembling a High Point. Believe it or not, I've actually gotten a lot of questions about this, and I know my High Point torture test uh, videos may make it appear that I'm not a big fan of the High Points, but uh, they're really robust guns, fixed barrel, straight blowback, uh, they run well, well, really well, they'll run just about anything you put in them, and uh, basically just a good little gun been getting a lot of questions about how to take them apart. Well, that's quite simple. First drop the magazine. Magazine releases this button right here. Push that, it'll drop the mag, set it to the side. Don't worry about it right now. Take the safety off, pull the slide back, visually inspect the chamber, nothing's in it. To take this gun apart, go ahead and lock the slide to the rear. You'll see this small roll pin right here in this slot will be exposed. If you've got an armorer's block, go ahead and use it. You're just going to take a roll pin punch. And you're going to drift that little pin out. Alright, roll pin comes right out. In fact, let me go ahead and uh, grab a parts tray here. Alright, roll pin comes out. Pull the roll pin punch out, set it to the side. You'll need it for reassembly. You'll notice that the safety's on. I've just remote removed the roll pin. Go ahead and take the safety off. Pull back as far as it will go. And pull up. Just like so. And allow it to slowly decompress. That'll expose your recoil spring and guide rod assembly. Put that in your parts tray. The guide rod assembly is just a little piece of polymer. It won't come apart. Okay? You'll notice you get a pretty basic arrangement. We're going to look at the slide. You'll notice this little doll's head right here. Just pull it out. Doesn't matter what direction it goes. That's what the roll pin actually sits through. Now the recoil, or the actual firing pin spring and striker is set up in a little assembly like so. Depending on what caliber you have depends on whether or not you'll have a variety of spacers. This one's a 9mm. See if I can get that all to come out in one, one unit. You got your striker which looks like this. And then you've got your spring assembly that powers the striker. It's a small spring and a large spring on the outside. That's really all there is to it. We're going to set that in the parts tray. And in terms of cleaning, that's really about as far as you want to take apart the slide. Um, if you want to take the extractor out, it's easy to do. All you got to do is take a small um, punch and knock that pin out, and your um, extractor assembly will come right out. The sides are also uh, likewise easily removed just by taking those two screws off. There's a plunger and spring under here that keeps tension on it. You'll notice if you back that screw out and push up and down on it, it's got some, um, basically some, some tension to it. Similar to, to the way um, adjustable Makarov sights are set up. Just clean this up is really all there is to that. That's the slide. Now for the frame, there's not really a whole heck of a lot you can do to take it apart, but I will show you a few things. Take the gun off of the safety position. You can remove your grip panels. Your grip panels are held in by a Phillips head screw. Put that in your magnetic parts tray. The grip panel will come right off. At the same time, you can also pull the safety assembly out. All that's really holding it in is this little polymer pole right here. It's hard to see, but you'll see it when you get it apart. Flip the gun over. Take the other grip panel off. Grip panel pops right off. There's a variety of things going on right here. And if you're not careful when you're taking the grip panel off, all this stuff will just fall out right in your hand, which is fine. This is actually your magazine safety lever. If you want your high point to fire without the magazine in it, simply remove this lever and that'll accomplish that. That'll put the trigger in direct control of the striker assembly. 
you can remove the connecting bar simply by lifting out and it pops right out like so same thing with your trigger all you have to do is punch this pin out right here and the whole trigger assembly for the most part will pop right out they're real simple little guns they're very robust very few moving parts overall compared compared to other guns on this side of the frame once you've removed the actual transfer bar if you want to take this striker assembly out simply lift up there's a spring in there and this serves as a plunger, a plunger basically the striker assembly it's a real simple design but it's very effective if you wish to clean that simply lift the plunger out in the spring blow it out the compressed air whatever you want to use clean the bore and that's really about as far as you want to take it apart for just everyday cleaning the only real difference with the high point to other guns is for field stripping it's not quite as friendly in terms of just taking it I guess generically apart like a Glock of course it just pops apart and you're good to go that's my only qualms with the high point is that there's really no easy way to disassemble it for cleaning however it's really not that difficult at all you just take your time and pay attention to the way everything goes together and it's really not a difficult handgun to work on to get a feel for. I'm going to go ahead and replace this grip panel on this side and we're going to go ahead and put the gun back together. I mean there's really not much to it. I'm going to replace that screw. Go ahead and put the safety in that position once you replace it in the gun and we'll go ahead and put our other grip panel back on. The uh, mag catch itself is not difficult to remove at all. There's this little spring if you just unclip it from the other side it'll fall right out kind of interesting design if you think about it it's real simple um, however it's very robust if you guys have seen the high point torture test you know how robust robust this gun really is okay these things don't play around so we're gonna put the other grip panel screw back in okay as far as the frame that's all we need to worry about got the grip panels back on of course any cleaning that you're going to do with this go ahead and do at that point you can see that it's a fixed barrel design it's not a lot breech, breech gun fixed barrel all right and put the slide back together really not a whole lot to it if you've removed the extractor of course it goes um, back in the same exact way that it came out you'll notice that on the high point there's no ejector that's because the cartridge casing is just blown out of the back from inertia. That's how most uh, blowback uh, guns operate. A good example is look at the uh, Beretta 950B uh, Minx 22 short. There's no ejector. It's just blown out from inertia. And these guns operate the same way. The weight of the slide actually holds the gun closed while the pressure builds up. Pressure builds up, throws the old casing out, strips a new one out of the magazine, and the process repeats. There's really not a whole lot to that operation in general. We're going to replace the striker and striker springs. Those just drop right in. You can take your same roll punch you used to take the pin out. And this whole process you've seen, we've only used one punch and a hammer. That's all you need in a Phillips screwdriver to maintain one of these. The gun's pretty much ready to go back together. We're going to take the recoil spring guide rod assembly and just start it in the little hole that's in there. And of course, basically what that recoil guide rod serves as, obviously, to keep the spring from crumpling up. But it's also meant to serve as a reassembly tool. If you guys have ever um, disassembled the Walther P22s and noticed they give you the little polymer rod with them, um, of course, that's for reassembly. It's not a part of the guide rod. can't remember if there's a guide rod with those guns or not. But just something of note, I suppose, to think of. Your doll's head, just put it in the back, like so. Doesn't matter what position. You're just going to have to kind of play with everything and line it up. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to put the gun on the fire position so the slide will clear. You're going to compress the recoil spring and guide rod assembly. You may have to play with the position of the doll's head there, as I call it, to get everything to line up. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on this particular operation so you can see what's happening. 
All right, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to show you this shot. That doll's head rod right there that I'm shining the light on has to go in that hole right there that the light is on. And all you're really gonna do is just kind of play with the position, drop the rod into that hole, and it rides home just like that. That's all there is to that particular um, scenario, okay? Now, of course, to complete the reassembly, draw this slide back to the rear. Place the roll pin back in its home now. For putting the roll pin back in, you may have to just kind of grab it like I'm holding it here and give it just a little bit more pressure to the rear to get the roll pin in. But once the roll pin is started, just take your mallet. Once it's started, that's not an issue. Just grab the uh, roll pin punch and finish it off. Just make sure it's even on both sides. See that roll pin could probably go a little further. So I'm going to go a little further with it. That looks good. All right, now we'll do a functions test. Of course, since we put the magazine disconnect back in, we're going to have to put the magazine in to do that. You can see it's empty, of course. I'm not stupid. You can distinctively hear the striker reset in there. Of course, the gun will not fire without a magazine in it. Put the magazine in. It'll fire. Test the safety. Safety works. Slides should not open with safety on. And that's all there is to it. These are very robust little guns, and if cared for properly, they run just fine. I do plan on going out and giving these guns a full, proper test to include long-range accuracy, short-range. We're going to do some mag dumps out of them, several mag dumps. We're going to try a, a variety of ammunition. We're also going to group some of the black powder loads that we made before in the previous videos. So um, we'll really see what these little guns are made of at that point. I mean, we know what they're made of. We know they're tough. But for real-world applications, we want to see just how effective they are. Of course, we will throw a little bit of our humor in the deal, but bear in mind that the test will be taken very seriously. And we'll give the test, uh, give the gun a very honest critique. Um, you know, if you guys have um, had the difficulty getting your high points apart and want to know how to, you know, maintain them, that's what you want to do. Just get the gun apart, and of course, uh, normal pistol cleaning practices follow from there. I'm sure you all know how to clean them. This is just to help you get them apart to do so.